uh, for New York and sending a message to the nation. Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Lawmakers continued a series of hearings this week on the state's handling of COVID-19. You'll remember that last week they heard about nursing homes. This week they held another hearing on nursing homes. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But they also held hearings on how hospitals were affected and how the pandemic caused problems for this year's primary elections in June. I want to focus here first on the elections hearing, because unless the state fixes what went wrong in June, we could be looking at a repeat situation in November. And there were some huge issues during the primary, largely in New York City. Here's Senate Elections Chair Zellner Myrie. Many people took advantage of voting early. Many people voted in person. And many people took advantage of voting by absentee. But too many New Yorkers saw their democracy fail them during this pandemic. Thousands of absentee ballots were discarded. Many people had bad experiences at their polling sites. And for them, their democracy stopped in this pandemic. Karen DeWitt covered that hearing this week. She's with me now in studio now to talk about that and much, much more. Karen, thanks for being here. Sure. Covered the hearings remotely, of course, from our homes and our computers. I know, and watching them four, five, six, 12, 24 hours, however long they last. Oh, that my day. goodness. Yeah, they have been very long. So, what were your takeaways from the elections hearing? It sounded like to me, and I don't mean to step on your toes, but it sounded like to me that the elections officials that testified basically said, our system wasn't set up for a bunch of paper ballots to come in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because in the past, 8 to 10 percent were absentee ballots. And in the primaries, 50 to 60 percent. That's crazy. Yeah, and they just don't have the staff. They don't have the preparation. They have to rely on the Postal Service, which some of the commissioners brought up that's very uncertain with what's going on with President Trump's appointee trying to slow down the mail. I'd also point out Governor Cuomo has not signed an executive order yet that would allow New Yorkers to use absentee ballots mm. uh, because of COVID in November. He's expected to, but that hasn't happened. So they can't even start preparing for that until the governor issues an executive order, because right now you have to be either out of the two, you have two excuses to be a, use an absentee ballot. And I think it's out of the county you live in, or if you're physically too ill to go to the, the ballot. And I think the, the legislature, pulse. I think the legislature passed a bill that that would basically mirror that executive order if it happened. But I don't think it's gone to the governor's desk. Well, that's yet. right. There's a, a bunch of bills that we probably can't even get into right now because it would take too long. <laughs> They're trying to tweak all these election things. But the governor hasn't uh, yet signed them or vetoed them. Yeah, the thing I found most interesting about the hearing was that a lot of this is just out of their control. As you said, like mm -hmm. the U.S. Postal Service, um, for example, right now absentee voters can request an absentee ballot up to seven days before the election. And you have to think as somebody who is sending in that application by paper, it's going to take a few days to get to the Board of Elections. And then they're going to look it over, approve your application, and then it's going to take a few days to get back. So all of that depends on the Postal Service getting it to them and then back to you in time for you to send it out by election day, which okay. is, it just sounds confusing to me just thinking about it. And <laughs> also it seems like some races are not going to be decided. We're not going to know election night. I think we'll probably know the presidential results because New York is such a blue state, but you've got state Senate races, assembly races, congressional races that are mm -hmm. probably going to be tight. And in, as we saw in the primary, it could be weeks before they count all those ballots or even months. So it's going to be a while before we know. But it just seems like we're going to have to do mail-in voting. They're not going to be able to run a regular election in November. What about the nursing homes hearing? I, I watched some of it this week. This is this was the second nursing home hearing. I, the first one was last week. What were your takeaways? I, I watched a lot of it, but certainly not all of it. Yeah. But the takeaway was that the nursing homes were just not prepared for right. a pandemic. I mean, who was? Yeah. No, <laughs> I know. But there are pandemic plans that exist that have, yes. just have sat on the shelf for a really long time. And, you know, maybe they should have dusted them off every few years and looked at them. But they just were not prepared for the influx of patients. In some cases, it seemed like they didn't want to test the residents for COVID. Perhaps they didn't want those numbers of deaths to count against them. And uh, the relatives that testified, really some compelling and very upsetting stories of how they couldn't talk to their relatives. Um, they weren't told that there was COVID in the nursing home. One man said he would have taken his mother out had he known, but the nursing home didn't tell him. And when they advocated for tests for their relatives, who, you know, were, they were told their relatives had a fever, a cough. They were told, oh, no, they don't need a test. We're going to treat them anyway and, you know, just, just let it go. And then you don't have accurate numbers of how many people 
did get the disease and how many people died there. And that's kind of important information for if there's a second wave or God forbid in a couple of years, we have another pandemic. I mean, just because we had one, you hadn't had one for a hundred years doesn't mean that we're gonna wait another hundred years, right? Who knows? Right, I couldn't imagine being one of those family members. Yeah. Uh, looking really ahead tough. to Monday, the governor is speaking at the Democratic National Convention, right. um, presumably digitally. I don't think he's gonna fly out to Wisconsin. I imagine, yeah, from his ceremonial office where he does everything in the Capitol now. Right, he didn't get a lot of attention in 2016 when he spoke. What do you think is gonna yeah, happen this year? Yeah, I, I was there. I went down to, the, I was covering the convention. I went down to the hall to hear him speak. It was a semi prime time slot. It was like yeah. seven or eight o'clock. And so he was on TV, but in the hall, everybody was talking. It was one of those times of the evening, everybody's talking among themselves, getting ready for the big speeches. And you know, he gave a speech about his father, Mario Cuomo, and you know, his philosophy of governing. And nobody listened or paid any attention. But I'll tell you, I think it's gonna be a lot different Monday night. So he's a national figure now. And it is going to renew, call, you know, questions or speculation about him becoming president yeah. or running for president. Even though he said, we got to point out, he said many, many times, <laughs> I don't want to be president. I'm happy being governor. But if he does a good job, it's going to feel speculation again. Oh, for sure. And we will be watching. Karen DeWitt, thanks as always for being here. Sure thing.